a Chinese military strategist pulls no punches in explaining why China looks forward to being a in step with Afghanistan after the hasty retreat of U.S. and Allied forces. Do stay tuned for that interview next. Welcome back. This is World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. The speed and scope of the Taliban's takeover in Afghanistan have prompted introspection in the West over what went wrong after $2 trillion spent on a 20-year war effort. China, though, is looking forward. It is ready, according to some, to step into the void left by the hasty U.S. retreat to seize a golden opportunity, end of quote. This is according to Mr. Joe Bo, senior colonel and former director of the Center for Security Cooperation at the Chinese Ministry of National Defense. Senior Colonel Zhou recently wrote an article entitled In Afghanistan, China is Ready to Step into the Void, published on the front page of New York Times recently. In the article, he unpacked China's position on Afghanistan. For a closer look, I recently sat down with him and let him explain about China's strategies and positions. The latest situation in Afghanistan, enormous amount of uncertainty, whether in Kabul or in Panjshir Valley, or about the Afghanistan Taliban and the U.S. relations regarding the deadline of withdrawal. A lot of mixed things going on all at the same time. Senior Colonel Zhou, in the mid and long term, what is your judgment? Uh, currently, I think the focus of the United States uh, is just uh, on a very tiny spot, that is the airport. You have to evacuate as many Americans or Afghani interpreters who have worked for Americans as soon as possible. So th that is a priority. Uh, in terms of the domestic situation, I think still there is uh, uncertainty as well in that Afghanistan is never a unified country. Uh, therefore, even if Taliban has uh, uh, taken power, what could happen in the future is still a question. Under these circumstances, there are a lot of debate about what's going to be China's role and how is China thinking strategically about Afghanistan when the U.S. is leaving, quote, a strategic vacuum. Senior Colonel Zhou, um, it seems that you are arguing in a way that's not going to two extremes. One, China will fill the void. The other is China will not uh, get involved in Afghanistan much because it's such a chaos. But you argue, apparently, go the middle way. Tell me more about it. Well, um, talking about the role of China in the future, we have to come first to the past. Uh, the thing is, because of American-led war in Afghanistan, China's involvement in Afghanistan is not uh, very big. But uh, it's still fair to say that China has provided assistance, at least millions of dollars, to Afghan people throughout uh, the warring years. And besides, we have a lot of economic interactions uh, with Afghanistan because the fact is China is one of the largest trading partners of Afghanistan. So as the, the trade volume actually has increased. So with uh, the uh, withdrawal of American troops, apparently uh, the biggest barrier for investment is gone. I believe this is a very good chance in that Afghanistan is uh, China's neighbor. We are only, we are connected by a border which is only 92 kilometers. Uh, so China's investment uh, is worldwide. So why not in a direct neighbor if the situation there becomes more peaceful? And that is a big if. Yeah. As you argued, Afghanistan was never really a united country over the past quite a few hundreds of years. And also, this time, when the Taliban coming into power, apparently, whether China will recognize the government established by the Taliban, which is now still under discussion, uh, is a big question mark. Uh, if you noticed what the Chinese State Councilor Foreign Minister Wang Yi said recently about China's hope about the styles of government together with the other parties of the international community for Afghanistan future is open, inclusive, and well represented. So whether these adjectives will be the eventual result is a big 
question mark, Senior Colonel Zhou. Yes, uh, that is a big question, but uh, at least the Taliban has expressed that they want to become uh, inclusive in that they have uh, actually made some offers, for example, to the former uh, President Karzai. Uh, so it remains to be seen, uh, but uh, for as far as China is concerned, I think for Minister Wang has made it quite clear that we wish yeah, Taliban to break away with all terrorist group and the political head uh, of Taliban during his visit uh, uh, to China and in his banner to meeting with one has pledged that, uh, that the Taliban would not allow any for, for forces to use uh, Afghan soil against China. Mm. Three things just to add to what you just said, the Senior Colonel Zhou. First of all, the relationship between Taliban and some of the widely recognized terrorist groups, whether in Afghanistan or the surrounding area, is a very tricky one. As you may know, many of these terrorist groups have been writing, writing congratulation letters to the Taliban in Afghanistan for the current situation, uh, that they got con control of most of the country. Second, if you look at the Taliban's priorities right now, two, one is to have a government mainly eight has its say. Secondly, is to calm down the international community so that they could have less sanctions and maybe in the future have rebuilding and certainly have recognition of the government, the Taliban, which played a pivotal role. Third thing, if you look at how it is dealing with uh, the promises, he's making all these promises to everybody with adjectives that's really up to interpretation. So if you look at the three areas, how much trust, Senior Colonel Zhou, given your strategic experience of China's military, how much trust China has toward a party like this? Of course we read uh, the words, but we also read the deeds. It seems that uh, uh, this Taliban government uh, looks uh, at least uh, somewhat different uh, from uh, uh, the old one in that the society has changed because right now internet is applicable to at least 70 people in Afghanistan and uh, they even allow uh, women to go to work, to go to school. This is totally different from what happened in the past. So hopefully, uh, as they have expressed, uh, Taliban will also change. Yeah? So this is the, uh, the, the precondition uh, and that is, of course, in, in China's interest uh, to, to see uh, it change for the better. Of course, we understand it will remain very much a religious country in that uh, the name of the country is already identified, right? Uh, but uh, still, we hope uh, it is a tolerant society uh, like the rest of the world. Mm. So that is the precondition, as you said, Senior Colonel Zhou. No, we cannot call it a precondition for China to deal with it because uh, it's up to the Afghan people to decide about their own future and that is China's policy and it's also American policy to have the peace process of uh, uh, Afghan-led and Afghan-owned so it's totally up to them because uh, Taliban is also Afghan, right? So that is a kind of a domestic affairs but I think uh, there is a kind of general wish from the international community that uh, this society would become a, a tolerant and open society. There are a lot of scenarios that's going on right now. One of the things to, for China to think about, Senior Colonel Zhou, I wonder, is how is China going to deal with some of the regional players and some of the players that has tremendous impact in Afghanistan as a result of earlier history? Mm. Well, I think uh, uh, China really could play a very positive role uh, in terms of Afghan's relationship with uh, its immediate neighbors or with uh, outside uh, uh, major powers. Uh, the country that would influence uh, Afghanistan most is Pakistan because of historical cultural links, because of, of the fact that the Pashtun people actually are just tribes across the border. And because of the fact that Pakistan actually has accommodated three million Afghan refugees uh, 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 ever since uh, the Soviet invasion. So the, the relationship between uh, these two countries is described by a former President Karzai as the conjoined brothers. 
But these conjoint brothers do not always look in the same direction. Actually, I would argue uh, almost safely that uh, uh, Afghan's relationship with India is probably better than its relationship with Pakistan. But uh, Pakistan's influence there, uh, of course, is stronger. Uh, but uh, China actually would like to play a very important uh, mediator role in uh, put, pulling these two countries together. Actually, in a joint statement among the three countries, China has pledged to work to improve the relationship be ship between these two countries. Uh, the other thing is what would the United States do uh, after its withdrawal uh, from uh, Afghanistan? Because of uh, the United States' global influence, I do not uh, foresee that uh, the U.S. will be a country of no action in Afghanistan, even after its withdrawal. Many question the U.S. recent action to withdraw from Afghanistan, ASAP, whether it has much to do First of all, of course, with 20 years, not much result and probably very negative results so far. But secondly, the U.S. strategic shift toward China. Uh, you heard that argument a lot. And it seems, well, the Afghan withdrawal of the U.S. troops is going on. You also have seen tremendous efforts made by the United States in recent days of China's neighbors. It's fine uh, if you want to enhance your bilateral relationship with any countries, but if you want to align yourself with these countries vis-a-vis -vis China, the first question is not about how China might think. The question is how these countries might think, right? Uh, there are quite a few elements here. So these countries have seen how Americans uh, have uh, lost the so-called forever war in Afghanistan. And it's a heavy blow to the credibility of the United States, be it uh, to its NATO allies, be it uh, to his Asian allies, be it with, to his partner. This is, is not a secret. Uh, in the international media, every day people talk about the disappointment uh, of uh, Americans' performance. Then <clears throat> the fact is he's visiting some uh, of these ASEAN countries, Singapore and Vietnam are both ASEAN countries. These are countries' best hope is to balance China-US relationship. Furthermore, to enhance the so-called ASEAN centrality. Uh, so in terms of uh, these two conditions, uh, I would say if he wants uh, these countries to be united with the United States against China, it's not su such an easy job. Another scenario people talk about is that the United States has been strategically giving up, quote unquote, Afghanistan to plant, quote unquote, a bomb on the neighbor of China. First of all, there might be rise of terrorism. In fact, it is already a concrete number since the past 20 years of the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan and meanwhile, the complex uh, web of relations in the region after the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan will for anyone, any big power in the region, to have huge challenge to handle. That, of course, include China. Uh, thirdly, when the rebuilding of the United States failed, it doesn't mean, some say, the U.S. influence in Afghanistan Vasper, whether this is a bomb, from your perspective, possibly planted by the United States on the border of China? No, I don't think so, because uh, one of the uh, best and recognized uh, advantage of China in terms of its foreign policy is that it could manage uh, to be friendly with, with all parties, even in warring countries. This is the most evident uh, in the Middle East. Why China? Uh, while having heavy investment there, is relatively uh, peaceful. That is because no countries in the Middle East would consider China would interfere in its domestic, domestic affairs. Besides, and more importantly, no countries would consider China would align itself to become enemy of this very country. So when we come to uh, the future situation in Afghanistan, we don't know. But a good example is Pakistan. Yes, 
Chinese workers were attacked from time to time. That is a big surprise to us. But uh, uh, Pakistan is not a very stable country, and there are certain uh, uh, forces that are against the government. So in this regard, the Chinese workers could be used uh, as ransoms, or even such attacks could be a kind of a direct message to the Afghan government. It might not be necessarily against the Chinese. Of course, with Chinese now around the world, there definitely would be more dangers involved. For example, China's Belt and Road Initiative on the land is very much overlapping with the so-called arc of instability. That means Chinese are not only hardworking people, they're also brave people. And this is not only uh, profitable for China, it's also a good chance for us to build up the infrastructure to improve the road condition of these countries so as to improve the, the standard of living. What do you think, if China is strategically smart, should look at in terms of factors that's going on in Afghanistan and make sound judgment about its relationship with Taliban and with the upcoming government, quote unquote, in Afghanistan? Well, I think uh, right now China is vividly involved uh, in uh, talking to uh, Taliban, uh, Taliban and uh, the regional countries because uh, we have uh, appointed a special envoy, yeah? Ambassador Yue Xiaoyong. Uh, I, I believe currently he is overseas, probably in Pakistan, yeah, talking to the relevant parties. So before uh, making a decision by the Chinese government, I think it's necessary for us to talk to all the parties to find what is best for Afghanistan and probably more important uh, is for Afghan to tell us what it is going to do. When Afghanistan is what it is and possibly evolving as we speak, how is China in the longer term going to guarantee its security and going to be a stable player strong strategic partner in this regard. I think uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization really have to play an important role uh, on Afghan issue in that Afghan lies in the very center of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Yes, uh, the, uh, the organization talked about this issue and because of the war uh, that went on uh, for two decades, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there isn't much the Shanghai Cooperation Organization can actually do, but now the situation is different. And because of the fact that it lies in the very heart of uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, I think, uh, uh, and it involves all Afghan's neighbors. Therefore, it is important for uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization to play a bigger role mm -hmm. there. There is a lot of talk about what is the takeaway from the so-called long war the U.S. had in Afghanistan 20 years. What do you think is the takeaway for China? I think China, first of all, should stick to its foreign policy, never intervene in the domestic affairs of other countries. Because Afghanistan reportedly have something to do with 911, therefore American troops went there to fight against the Taliban, against the any other forces. Militarily it won, but uh, when it dragged on, then it became a uh, chaos mm -hmm. for the United States. So that uh, really would uh, provide good lessons to China in many fronts. One is in terms of your foreign policy, right? Do not intervene uh, unless it is absolutely necessary. And do not intervene if it is the domestic affairs of other countries. and. Uh, help these countries whenever possible. For example, if you read the military uh, involvement of PLA overseas, putting all these different sorts of uh, uh, activities all together, be it counter piracy, be it peacekeeping, be it disaster relief, uh, whatsoever, they could be uh, generalized as a, a corporation, or as a humanitarian aid, or the so-called uh, efforts in addressing non-traditional threats. This is totally different from Americans' efforts in policing the world. If you assist the world, 
but do not police the world, then the result is totally different. And, uh, but the question is, China is becoming more important. How could you assist the world? That is a good question. Because we always say that uh, uh, we have to make contributions in line with our national strengths, right? But the question is, your national strength is ever growing. That means your capability is becoming stronger. And that means you could contribute more to the rest of the world. I uh, always believe the motto of PLA is to serve the people. All Chinese know that. But uh, who now are the people? In the 21st century, the people are the people of the world, not only Chinese people. Senior Colonel Joe Wu talking to us about China's possible strategy on Afghanistan. That's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more search World Insight, check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of the team. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.